cool. Here we are at the Adelaide Airport on our way to the Gold Coast. Is that what you said? <laughs> on our way to the Gold Coast, the annual, the third annual bee conference. We're going to go out there and check out some other cool beekeepers, have a bit of a chat around, see all the new shit that I'm not allowed to buy because there's some wicked ass displays and what's it called? The ex exhibition people selling me stuff. So the wife said, I'm only allowed to take a small checkbook because otherwise I could get in all sorts of trouble. <laughs> I like the fact that even in a modern place, you've still got a bit of shade cloth to keep the shit off people's heads. <laughs> They've only spent a few hundred million. Look at that, look at that top quality work and shit. Hey, the Bush Bee Man will be proud of that. Look, even they can't get the shit straight. Right, here we go, folks. Check this out. Goodness me. Hybrid world in Adelaide. That's that driverless bus thing, isn't it? The hybrid world. Well, we're on our way to Brisbane. We've just been in Fort Magoan to the Gold Coast. Oh, God, I don't know. We're going to Queensland. That sounds better. <laughs> okay, we're heading to the Gold Coast. We've got ourselves on the plane. And of course, in Bush Bee Man style, we ended up by the, the emergency exit door. So we've just been given the directions on how to save the plane if we have a crash. So, but hopefully we don't have a crash because that's up. Well done. Whew. Look at that. It's even drizzling. <laughs> Holy Safe arrival. Check out all that crap on there. <laughs> no expense spared here. I think we've ordered a Honda Civic. <laughs> it's a bit of a problem. Look out, bee conference. Here comes the bush bee man. Hope they don't kick us out. That'd suck, wouldn't it? Hell, we might have to go on a road trip. This is a bit snazzy, this car. We're off to the bee conference here in Queensland and on the Gold Coast, so that's pretty cool. We're going to check out what's going on in the bee industry, so hopefully and meet some cool people that maybe we can go and have a chat with. I'm just checking out these beautiful banks here and thinking, no wonder the bees do well up here in the, in the Sunshine State. Anyway, come along with us and check out what happens at a bee conference. You might be bored shitless, but it might be awesome too. hit anybody that suck that'll put a damper on our bargain got this cool car for a hundred bucks for the four days if we run into somebody though it costs us four grand so that'll be a big shit no hitting anybody is the plan so less talking more concentrating i've been told don't get me too close to the edge have a look at that drop off my god the lads put us on the 29th floor or something it's insane anyway it's kind of cool we're here at the sunshine coast which isn't much sun no, we're not at the Sunshine Coast. We're here at, where are we? The Gold Coast. It's supposed to be sunshine, but as anyway, we're here at the Gold Coast, which is a reference to sun, but as you can see, there's no sun. So it's a bit, well, I guess it is winter. Anyway, it's pretty groovy. We're here, stuck up in the, in the bloody middle of nowhere. The room we actually did book, sort of got mucked up. So at the last minute, we had to do a last minute exercise of insanity. And this is the room that we found, or the lad found. How good's that? So we're on the beach, which is pretty cool. So here we are, we're actually, we're actually pretending we're organised, but we've actually got this at like half the price it normally costs, so that's good. Oh, and by the way, thank you to Patreon dudes, so I hope you enjoy this little journey into um, beekeeping in Australia, and let's see if you can see what we're up to. I think we've nearly made it to the registration desk. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of an Aladdin's cave, this joint. Things must be looking up in the bee industry, though. It's a bit of a snazzy little place. So I hope we'll fit in. I mean, it's a, you know, we might be slumming it. We might be a little bit lowbrow for this event. But anyway, let's keep. Stay tuned. You never know what might happen. Well, look at that. We've got a fancy bag. New plus. And I even printed off, I printed off the program, but they can finish one. Hopefully we get a pen, because then we can write some stuff down.
here we are at the Bee Convention, and we're lucky enough that we've um, found the inventor or the creator of the Captar lift, B. Louie himself. So how cool is that? He's going to give us a bit of a demo, a live demo here at the show. So how lucky are we? Lou was just making a joke a minute ago about the fact that this the beekeeper can load himself into bed with this thing. <laughs> Well, I reckon the best part about the bee conference is that we're not where it's cold and we're by the beach. The downside to it is we haven't actually been able to spend much time here because we've been learning all about beekeeping. So there you go, that's pretty exciting. I'm just demonstrating how intelligent I really am. Thinking about the fact that I never actually realised that the seagulls have to go and find fresh water to drink. Because I mean, there's all this water here, but it's not much chocolate about drinking. They like chips and salt, mate. I don't know about anything else. This is David. He's he's the man from America. Has been beekeeper for as well. 50 plus, 50 plus years, years, which is which is pretty amazing, and um, I think he's credited with finding out about colony collapse in, in his country. And yeah, we just thought the, they, we, say, they say I'm the face of CCD, and that's yeah. pretty ugly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we thought, well, what a golden opportunity to grab him here and, and um, yeah, share his knowledge with the rest of the world. We've been pollinating blueberries in Maine for the same customer for 44 years. Make 44 years. I worked for Jasper Wyman's largest American blueberry wild blueberry company. Oh wow! And uh, some of my apple customers go back 40 years. You know. Yeah, unreal. So we've been, you know, good people. And, and, you know, how do you get on with the almond growers? Do you do that as well? Well, that, we've, we've that been the, the almond people. You know, we've been we've been around a few different places. The almond business. There's, you know, that's big business. That's a yeah. that's a different. That's not family. That's not. You know, that's a lot of big business. And uh, yeah, yeah. actually, we didn't even send any bees to California this last year. We sent it out because it just too many issues going out there. The year before, we got sprayed. The, the grower we was on, we got sprayed really bad, and, and oh, wow. we just decided. And I wasn't alone. A few other guys decided, you know, we're just going to wait this thing out and see what happens. But they did an so insecticide I wanted, spray or something in the blossom. Pest, well, they put a lot, used a lot of fungicides and a lot of growth growth regulators. And man, growth regulators can set you back. I mean, yeah. they just shut your brood brood rearing down, and and, yeah. and it not just affects you now; it affects you for the whole summer. Yeah, exactly right. And so then your whole honey so harvest So we is in re, we had rebuilt, basically rebuilt, you know, and you know. And, yeah. The sad oh, wow. part about beekeeping in the United States is that the only thing that's driving our industry at night right now is that almond business. Everybody's yeah. chasing that rainbow in the sky. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, you know, it just, you know, our honey prices, I mean, our, heart, our, our production has dropped down less than half of where it was 10, 12 years ago, I mean, for the whole country. Yeah, and you reckon that's due to the increase in the whole pesticide? Well, that's the increase in the whole pesticide thing, because bees aren't, they just aren't living long. I mean, they're sick. We're just yeah. dealing with sick bees, you know, and, and our ground is, and the other problem with our monoculture is our ground is sick. We, we use more Roundup than anybody, you know, you know, herbicide than anybody in the world. I mean, that ground is dead. I mean, when there's no fish worms left in the ground, the ground's gone. Yeah, it's in trouble. I mean, yeah. and we're so, streaming down the road after you. That's, and the, you that's right. why I'm interested in yeah, having a chat. I mean, you, know, you guys, down you that guys road are like right a, here yeah, behind us, you yeah. know, maybe not as fast, but Put yeah. Put on the pedal and yeah. we're into it. Like, yeah. It's pretty messy. The chemical and, companies know they got, you know, they get the money making yeah. game. Oh, absolutely incredible. Yeah. And they've got it sewn up. About the only thing in Australia that hasn't quite happened is the whole seed bank monopoly part that's going on with the GM thing. Well, that's and coming, I tell you what, it, yeah, the thing is, you know, oh, our seed, you know, this seed business, right now, Bear is controlling, with this merger with Monsanto, Bear is going to control 70 plus percent of the seed in our country and 80 some percent of the pesticides. It's just insane. It just, you know, it just, it's insane. <laughs> but, and so you go back 10, Five, ten years ago, we still had a lot of mom and pop seed companies. Yeah, yeah. They bought them up, 
or forced them out of business or Monsanto forced them out of business? Or... Well, you signed this agreement and you would abide by this. They call it a conservation agreement. Well, there's nothing conservation about it. But anyhow, <laughs> you signed this agreement and you basically gave them permission to come out of your farm anytime they wanted to see if there's anything there that didn't belong here. Yeah, yeah. And, okay, so you got a, in a one case not too far from my from where I'm at, a soybean, a far, farmer growing soybeans, they found they found soybeans that that didn't that had their traits in some in somebody else's beans he was growing. Okay. Oh, okay. He was fined so he 40, don't, he don't they fined him forty four thousand dollars. Wow. And you know the lawyers that, the lawyers told him you know you better pay it because you go to go to court you're going to lose. What do you think? We probably should do better or different than to maybe, I don't know. I don't well, know on my little voice you know, isn't going to make any difference, but you know, I I'm told, just curious. I told some people today, told some day, people today on a bus on a tour, you know, like the Canadians tell us, you know, if you guys do something dumb this week, we're going to do something, the same thing dumb two weeks from now because we're not smart enough to figure out. We, we, Somebody we, we, needs, you know, and I, and I don't know how you do it because the problem is these people have, have inner, you know, in talking to Australian people I know in Australia from five six years ago, just like you said, they're in they're all woven in your government. They're already there. Yeah. yeah and somehow and you gotta get that mess stuck. And I don't yeah, know. Yeah. yeah and the people, good. you know, it, it takes the people, and it, you know, it takes not just the farmers and the beekeepers to stop this. It takes the it, everybody. You see on the news, okay, there's an apple shortage. But you go to the supermarket, and I swear to God, there is just rows of them. Rows like, of apples. And so, so, because so the people the in the city it, go. What are they talking yeah. about? Right. You know, like, yeah. like, okay, the apples might be like, a dollar a pound dearer, whatever it is, but they're still, they're, there's they're a whole still shop there. full they're of still them. There. And yeah. they, and the price still, went up, yeah, but, but they, still, well, yeah. I don't remember how much it paid the last time, but. Exactly, yeah, and, okay. and so they get a disconnect as to what really is involved. Yeah, I mean, in, we're yeah, living, and I'm sure it's the same way here. It, you know, it used to be that, you know, these people in the city were at least connected to somebody farming granddad. a generation away. You yes, know? they had granddad on the farm. Right, or, granddad or, 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 somebody. or somebody. Now, they don't know anybody. I mean, yeah. you know, the, the people that are here don't, I mean, it's not only here, it's in the states, everywhere. Nobody, yeah. I mean, you got five farmers producing food for hundreds of people, mm -hmm. where it used to be, you know, one, you know, maybe 10 farmers to 100 people. Now yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's, yeah. you well, know, it's the it's, same here because we had, you know, whole, Towns basically from that farming were farm families. And, yeah, yeah, and now there's nobody. There's no football team or netball team anymore because everybody's gone and there's like say well, five, that's, five you, mega farms. Right, that's and, exactly that's exactly And that's the right. next that's probably the next bit that we're headed to is where you, you've gone. Like as in okay, then those mega farms become More bigger mega, and bigger and bigger, bigger and then eventually it gets and, untenable. Right. And then you know, once to get to that point, you know the well, in our part of the world, I mean, in the mid, sorry, especially the Midwest, I mean, these farms get so huge, that finally, the chemical companies even buy an interest in them, you know? Yeah, wow. And then yeah. you really got, I mean, we have, you know, but the interesting thing, I mean, the thing that, that it's happening in the U.S., and it's happened in the last four or five years, is people are starting to think about where their food came from. Yeah, that, amen. That's, yeah. that's pretty important. Yeah, and definitely. we've got, you know, in the honey industry, we have several packing outfits that have their, their increases that are in the 25%, 20-25% every year for the last couple of years because they're packing local, raw, unfiltered yeah. honey, and people yeah. are looking for that. Yeah. We, Actual real, real product. Not something that, you know, that came from five countries on the back of the jar. Yeah. Exactly right. uh, yes. And then the meat business is the same way. Meat, you know, people are starting to worry about where their meat came from and so on and so forth. Yeah. And, you know, this is a new, a whole new deal because the fact it wasn't that way 10 years ago. I think people are starting to understand that you are what you eat. That's exactly right. Exactly what you consume well, is what and you I'm become. Not, you know, I'm, like not sure, you... I'm not sure here about Australia, but I can tell you the United States, you know, our, our, health, our health problems, our cancer is, and, our, and our child learning problems and all that stuff that's associated with what you eat is just going it's yeah, going yeah, bunker oh, yeah, yeah. and yeah. i think it's a as you said it's a groundswell of the community starting to say yeah enough is enough let's let's look at how a lot of people are starting going. to look about how to eat eat and you know yeah. and, and on, yeah i mean we don't have to be i don't know ultimate organic organic people but, 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 but we, we need gotta to start thinking about what where our food came from yeah, thank you very much dave that's awesome yep. it's really nice to meet nice you i'm looking you forward guys. to hear you hear you, hear you right. talk
So that's the wind up to our bee conference here at Surface Paradise. I reckon it's been a successful couple of days. I'm nearly worn out, ready to get back to my ladies and have a bit of, bit of proper out in the bush company with myself.